Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overlord, and if you remember correctly, in my previous video I taught you how to train stable diffusion with your own images using Dreambooth, but unfortunately the notebook updated again, so technically this video is already outdated. But no worries, because Daddy Overlord is here to help. So in this video not only I will try to solve the most common errors I saw when trying to run Dreambooth with Rumpod and Vast AI, but I will also give you tips and tricks on how you can make your final images look better. And finally, I will also show you how you can use Dreambook for free using three different Google Colab docs and how you can use that Finish Diffuser model on your own computer. Are you ready? Let's go! But before we begin, just a quick announcement. Today I will officially launch my Patreon page, so if you want to support my work and my mission and increase your social status from mere mortal humans to Patreon supporters, the link will be in the description down below. Thank you so much in advance for your help. Alright, let's begin. First common error, CUDA out of memory. Well, this one is a real head scratcher because technically this error should not happen uh, because, well, you only need 24 gigabytes of VRAM to be able to run this notebook. But apparently this error can be solved by increasing the amount of space that you have on your container pod. So here, for example, I have 20 and 20 for container disk and volume disk. So I highly recommend changing the container disk and volume disk to both 60 gigabytes so your total disk volume will be 120 gigabytes. Also, be careful because something that I noticed is that when you select your template, for example, if you select the Rumpod Stable Diffusion template, look what happens on the left right here when they select it. It reverts back to the 2020. So this is also a mistake that I almost made. Be careful that when you choose a template, this somehow just revert back to 2020. So again, don't forget to change it back to 60, 60, and then press on continue. Also, another thing, just a little tips for you. Um, there is absolutely no use in choosing multiple GPUs. This is absolutely useless, all right? Do not like waste your money on this. Just choose one GPU with at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM, all right? So one RTX A5000, is not the same as, for example, two RTX A4000. This is not the same. What really matters is one GPU having at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you have, for example, six GPUs of four gigabytes of VRAM each, that's not going to be the same as one GPU with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And increasing the amount of GPUs that you rent will not decrease the amount of training time that you are going to need to train your models. So don't do this error, all right? Keep your money. So common error number two, low transfer speed on vast.ai. Now this is something that I saw multiple people complaining about and my solution is actually very simple. Well, first of all, just make sure that here the upload and download speed are pretty high when you select your GPU to begin with, but also when you click on Edit Image and Config and you select PyTorch, you want to select this little box right here that says Jupyter Direct HTTPS. So have these two boxes checked and then you can click on Save. And this will greatly increase the amount of upload and download speed that you get on Vast.ai. And here again, don't forget to maybe increase the amount of disk space that you need. So maybe something above 100 gigabytes should be enough. And again, the same tips apply. Do not choose multiple GPUs. Only one GPU is enough. Just, just select the cheapest one, as you can see here. The cheapest one is an RTX 3090. Only 29 cents an hour. This is what you want. Common error number three. Click to show JavaScript error. Now this happens when you try to click on login to stable diffusion cell and it gives you this JavaScript error. So to solve this error, all you have to do is simply refresh the page, press on F5, as you can see here, if you run the cell again, this works correctly now. Common error number four, name trainer is not defined. Woof, wow, this one is absolutely insane because um, I'm saying this because the last night I spent around an hour trying to solve this issue and it's a very difficult error to solve because that's not even an error, it's just a bug. And unfortunately there's not an easy way to solve this and the only solution that I found is to basically click on file, click on shut down to shut down the JupyterLab notebook, then go back into your pod 
and then click on reset pod, and then try to relaunch every single cell again. This is a very annoying bug because there is absolutely no reason for it to work, and in the end the only way that we managed to solve this is just by restarting the pod again and again. So I'm really hoping that this bug will be fixed in the future releases of the notebook, but as of right now this is a very annoying bug to have. But if you have this error, just simply try to shut down the notebook and restarting the pod again and hope that it works this time around. Common error number 5. Name dataset is not defined. Now again, this is again another bug. This is technically not something that you did wrong. And the way to solve this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is just to scroll up until you see the dataset equals person DDIM or any other dataset name that you chose. You're gonna select that line, copy it, then scroll down, click on this button right here to a new cell, paste it, and then run the cell. And then you can rerun the training cell again. Very annoying bug, but pretty easy to solve. Common error number six, training ended after only one iteration. Now this one is also a super common error right now. And the way to solve this is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is just click on new window right here, click on terminal, this will launch a brand new terminal, and here you're gonna copy and type PSAUX. And what you want to do right now is basically check the PID of the Python relauncher.py and the Python webui.py. Now, in this example right here, the PID for the Python relauncher.py is 11, and the PID for the Python webui.py is 26. And what you want to do, once you have found these two numbers, you're gonna type kill and then the number of the PID. In my example, it's 11. And then kill for the second number. And in my case, it's 26. And then press enter. And then simply go back to the cell and rerun it again. Pretty annoying again, but super easy to solve. Now here's a nice little tip that I learned from Joe, Mr. Guitar Man on YouTube, whose notebook that we are using right now, if you want your images to look better, here, when you choose the name of your character, instead of inputting the name of your character, you want to input the name of a famous celebrity that looks like your character. And this will basically trick Stable Diffusion into believing that you want images of a certain personality, of a certain celebrity, and this will basically generate a bigger variation of images and styles than if you were simply to use a character that Stable Diffusion has no idea exists. And my little trick for this is to use a website called starbyface.com where you can actually upload a picture of yourself or a character that you want to train and then it will basically analyze the face and give the celebrity that it looks the most. So for example, in my case, I would like to train the new Renera actress, and no, please do not spoil me the show, I haven't watched the last episode yet, but basically you input here the image of the character you want to train, in my case it's the new Renera, and then it shows you all the actresses that looks the most like this actress right here. But you want to make sure that when you choose the actress or the actor that looks like the most like your character, is that Stable Diffusion has images of that actress. So for example, if you choose Leanne Rhymes, I'm not sure that Stable Diffusion has been trained with images of that actress. But someone like Mary Kate Olsen, for example, or, or even better, Elizabeth Olsen is probably the best choice. So if you go to Stable Diffusion, for example, you select Stable Diffusion 1.4, and you write, in my case, a photo of Elizabeth Olsen, and you click on Dream, you need to make sure that Stable Diffusion has this actress trained already. And as you can see here, it's not exactly the best representation of Elizabeth Olsen, but it's pretty close nonetheless. So for this, all you have to do is just scroll down until you see edit the personalized py file. And here, you can simply replace like Joe Pena into, in my case, Elizabeth Olsen. Then you can copy this line right here, paste it here, and then run the cell. And there you go. And this is what I get in the end with simply using Elizabeth Olsen. But if I put a space right here and then click on generate, it gives me this which is almost like a mix between these two characters, which is absolutely fantastic. 
and it creates a bigger variation of images than if you were to simply use the name of your character alone. Now what if you don't want to spend money renting a GPU on Rumpod or VastAI and you just want to train your images with Dreambooth but you don't have a powerful enough computer to be able to run this locally? Well, you have basically another solution which is called Google Colab Docs. And currently, there are three different Google Colab Docs that you can use right now to train Stable Diffusion with your own images using Dreambooth. Now, unfortunately, there is currently a big downside to this because if you use a Google Colab Docs, you do not get a CKPT file in the end. Here's a little document that I made to explain to you a little bit. As of right now, you have two choices, all right? Either you use RunPod or VastAI and you pay around 40 cents an hour and you use the Jopena notebook to train Stable Diffusion with your own images with Dreambooth and in the end of the training you get a CKPT file that you can use on Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 or the automatic quadruple one and everything as well or you can use the Google Collabs which works with the diffuser model is free but in the end you do not get a CKPT file and this cannot be used with Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 only with JRISC SD GUI which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. So as of right now you have three different Google Colab Docs that you can use the official from the HuggingFace.co website the Shivam Shri Rao which uses only 17.7 .7 gigabytes of VRAM which is apparently also twice as fast as the one above. And again, the last one, which is called the last Ben, which is a 65% of speed increase and uses less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is really super impressive. And all the links for these Google Colab Docs will be in the description down below. So basically every single one of these Google Colab Docs works pretty much the exact same way. So to be able to use them, you need that Hugging Face account. And you also need to click on this link right here to be able to accept the terms that you see on the page. And then you need to create a Hugging Face token. And for this, all you have to do is just click on your profile, go to settings, on access tokens, click on new token, select a name for your token, choose write, and then click on generate token. And then you can simply click here to copy token to the clipboard. And then you'll be able to use this on every single one of these Google Colab Docs. Basically run every single send one after the other. Just follow the instructions. It's actually really, really easy, really simple. It's technically a little bit easier than using the notebook, for example. But in the end, all you get is a bunch of folders and not an SKPT file. Now here's something very interesting. If you don't want to train your own model, because you don't have time and you just want to use models created by the community, you can click on the description down below and you arrive on this page on the hugginface.co website in the Stable Diffusion Dream Booth library. And here, click on expand, you're gonna have all the models that were trained by the community using the Google Colab Docs from the hugginface.co website. And you can use every single one of these models on your own computer and I'm gonna show you how. So for example, let's say you want to use this one, Scarlet Witch for example, which is basically a model trained with the face of a Scarlet Witch and to be able to use this, you're gonna come here and click on use in diffusers and here you're gonna select this line right here, git clone, you're gonna select it, control C, then you're gonna create a new folder, you're gonna click here on this folder URL, type CMD, press enter, this will bring the command prompt window. Then you're gonna paste this line right here and press enter. Now it's gonna take around a minute or two to download all the files that it needs. And if you go inside that folder, you're gonna see a bunch of files. And you're gonna be like, okay, that's nice and all, but how, how do I use these files? They're kinda useless, it's not a CKPT file, so I can't use this in Super Stable Diffusion. But don't worry, here's the little trick. To be able to use this, all you have to do is click on the link in the description down below and you arrive on this page. And you see here it's called Stable Diffusion JRISC GUI 0.1. And this is what you're gonna use to generate your images with the model that you downloaded from the uginface.co website. So just scroll down, click on download. This will download a 3 gigabyte file. Simply right click, click to extract to Stable Diffusion JRISC GUI. I'm not gonna do this because it's already done. Then you're gonna double click on this folder go into Diffusion 16, 
Stable Diffusion V1 4, and then you're gonna select all these files. You're gonna press Ctrl C to copy these files. You're gonna create a new folder right here, just in case. And you're gonna call it copy. And inside you're gonna paste the files that you copied from the previous folder, just in case. Then you're gonna go back, you're gonna select the model that you downloaded previously, in my case it's current witch. You're gonna select all these files right here, Control C, go back into the Stable Diffusion Jerry's GUI, Diffusion 16, Stable Diffusion V14, and then you're gonna press Control V to paste all the files in this folder. And when it asks you, yes, you want to replace all the files in the destination. And once this is done, you're gonna go back to the Stable Diffusion GRISC GUI folder, scroll down until you see the Stable Diffusion GRISC GUI.exe, double click on it, and here you see a dialog box where you can input your prompt, the output folder, the steps, the scale, the number of samples per prompt, your seed, and the resolution. Now in my case, since it's Scarlet Witch, I'm gonna have to input Scarlet We Person, and to be able to find this, you have to go back into, into the page where we downloaded the diffuser model. And these are the two arguments that we need to use. Scarlet Wit is basically the name of the character, and person is the dataset name that was used to train this concept. So to be able to use this, when you create new images, you need to input both Scarlet Wit and person. So in my case, it's gonna be portrait of Scarlet Wit person and then you can put all the other additional arguments and then click on render. And once this is done, to be able to see the results, you're gonna scroll up until you see the folder results, double click on it, and then you're gonna see all the images that were generated with the new prompt. And here's the final result. So as I said, as of right now, there is no way to be able to use the models that were created using a Google Colab docs on Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 or any other installation of Stable Diffusion. But soon we might get a converter from diffusers into CKPT files. And in that case, once we have that converter, the Google Colab docs will become way, way more useful. Because once we have a CKPT file, we can use it anywhere we want. And there you have it, folks. Right now, I really hope that you've played around with Dreambooth a little bit, because this is really a game changer in the world of stable diffusion and AI-generated images. I absolutely love it. Once again, this video took me a long time to make, so I would greatly appreciate if you become one of my patrons to help me make these videos in the future. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.